Lately, a lot of activity happens in my house. My family has several paranormal occurrences happen, and we're pretty much used to it at this point. But lately, things have been different with the things that we see or hear. Everyone in my family knows about a few spirits that we have in our basement, and how they sometimes chase us or hover near us whenever we're down there alone. But the other day, I went down to the laundry room and was grabbing a few cake pans and putting my laundry in the dryer, when something behind the water tank started peeking out and looking at me. I just thought that if I told it to leave me alone like I usually do, it would disappear. When my brother came out of his room, he stopped to talk to me or ask me something when it started peeking out again, inching closer to us when I told him to run. It's this weird hunched over pure white being that has no facial features that I know of or see. The other thing that's downstairs is this pure black thing that's in the main part of the basement that waits near the stairs and chases you. It also doesn't have facial features since it's too dark. And this thing seems to be darker than any shade of black. It's tall, has scraggly hair and very long fingers that's hunched over. The other day when I went to grab a few cooking ingredients, it was very low to the ground and seemed to launch itself at me, which scared me since it's never done that before. The other thing that we noticed is the amount of activity near the basement stairs and the kitchen area. Our dog gets excited whenever someone comes upstairs and she jumps up and wags her tail and waits for them to come up so she can get pats and kisses. Every so often, when everyone's upstairs, we'd hear someone or something run up the stairs and our dog would go to the stairs to see who it is, only no one comes up. The other thing we noticed is this person that peeks from the stairs into the kitchen. All we see is its head, part of their neck, a few blurred facial features, and that's it. We'd be having a conversation and suddenly see this person peeking over at us from the stairs and duck back down before we realized what happened. I'm not sure where all this activity is coming from, but it can get creepy sometimes when you're the only one around to witness it or have someone else not witness it when you're there and seeing it for yourself. I was home alone when everyone else went to take the dog out to the farm and wanted to go to a few stores. I didn't want to go since the car would be packed and loud, so I decided to stay home and clean up. I saw everyone leave and the only ones home were the cat and I. I went to the kitchen and started on doing the dishes. I threw the old dish rag down the stairs to the basement, thinking that when someone goes down there, they'll toss it in the washer. I got this sudden sense of dread from the stairs and ran back to the kitchen, bumping into the table out of fear. I thought nothing of it later and got a new dish rag. I got this sense of someone on the stairs, and so I went to go see if my cat had a hard time jumping over the baby gate at the bottom of the stairs. We have to have one so our dog doesn't go to the basement. I checked and didn't see my cat there, and as I was about to head back up, I heard this very loud, deep growl. It sounded like an animal, but at the same time it didn't. It was so loud and deep, I thought it was right beside me. I was able to feel the vibrations of it in the floors and in my chest, and I was frozen to the spot. It growled again, and I ran back upstairs as fast as I could. I've never heard anything that loud and deep before, and it scared me so bad. We live in the city where the only animals that roam around the streets are stray cats and rabbits. There's no stray dogs in my neighborhood, and we don't have any animals in the house besides our cat, dog, and budgies. It wasn't a truck driving by since it was late and we're able to tell the sound of a truck. I'm not sure what it was, but that was the only time I heard it and haven't heard it since.
The other day, I was in the backyard with my cat. I have to be out there so she doesn't escape her harness and takes off. And I was in the garden looking for cucumbers and squashes to bring inside. Really, the only thing I'm scared of out there are wasps. But then I see this figure behind me, and I thought it was my brother trying to come up and scare me. And when I turned around to confront him, I saw no one there. Going about my business, I bring whatever I picked inside the house, and I head back out. Nothing else happens when I'm out there. After a bit, I head in when my cat wants to go in, and not long after that, my mom, grandma and brothers head out to go walk the dog, and my other brother left to be with friends, so it was just my cat and I at home. I was cleaning and baking, and as I said something in the living room, I turn and see the black figure again, but in full view. It's just a little shorter than I am, it's fully black, and in the middle of its face is this weird red mark. As soon as I see it, it's gone. When the others got back, I told my mom about it, and she doesn't have any idea what it could be. The next day, it's just my grandma and brother at home, since my mom went to work and my brothers are at school, and my other brother is downstairs. I was making something in the kitchen, and I see that same figure again, still standing really close to me. At first, I wasn't scared of it since it caught me off guard. But now that it's not leaving me alone, I'm starting to get freaked out about it. Cut to last night, and everyone's heading off to bed. The animals are already fast asleep, and I'm the only one that's still walking around fully awake. It was close to 2am, and I head out to the kitchen to grab something to drink, and to use the bathroom. When all of a sudden, I feel like something is behind me. The only light that I put on was the bathroom one, and that was down the hall, so it was dark where I was standing in the kitchen. On instinct, I opened the fridge so the light inside would come on, and when I turned, the figure is standing there. I forgot about my drink. I walked fast to my room so I didn't wake anyone up by running. I turned the bathroom light off as I passed, and I didn't come out of my room after that. In all honesty, I'm not sure what this thing is, why it's following me, or how it started to follow me. The first time I saw it was in the garden a couple days back, and ever since then, it's been popping up at odd times here and there, just standing really close to me and not doing anything else. So our house was built back in 99, about a year or so before I was born. I've had a few odd experiences in my life, but the craziest was when I was 10 or 11 years old. My brother's ex-girlfriend and I were hanging out in one of the back rooms, now our current roommate's room, watching a movie late one night. My parents and brothers were not home when this happened, since my parents were out on a date at the time. Anyway, we were watching a comedy, so I know that this wasn't just my imagination playing tricks on me. And halfway through the movie, she ended up pausing it. She asked, did you hear that? I said, no, what? She shook her head and we continued watching the movie. About five minutes later, she stopped it again. With a confused look, she asked, are your parents home yet? I said, no, they went out on a date not that long ago so they shouldn't be back yet. After the third time of hearing something, she paused the movie. I got up and opened the door to our hallway. There, I saw an orb of light move quickly out of the hallway. What the hell, I exclaimed, walking towards the kitchen where it darted to. Now, our hallway is straight, with my room completely opposite of the room we were in, on the other side. There's also a middle bedroom on the right, and just after that, her bathroom. The entrance to the kitchen is on the left side, but you can't actually see it if you're in the hallway. And so when I saw the orb dart out of the hallway, I didn't see it after that, since I saw it for a brief second. We both walked out towards the kitchen and, I kid you not, 
the cupboards that held our pots and pans opened and they all flew out and onto the kitchen floor. At the same time, we heard what sounded like muffled voices all throughout the house, going room to room. It was almost like a whole bunch of people were walking through the house as we felt vibrations on the floor, almost like the whole house was pulsating, to put it accurately. It wasn't loud at all, but it's hard to describe fully since it's been a while. Then I looked towards our living room and on our glass table, a globe, which was in the middle of the table, moved towards the edge and dropped to the floor. After that, it was completely silent. We ended up going outside and waited for my parents to come home. And a friend of hers came over and she told her what happened. After that, it never happened again. To this day, I've never had anything like that happen to me ever. And to this day, I still have no clue what the hell happened. Must have been some odd poltergeist activity that just randomly sparked out of nowhere. Our house isn't haunted, but I've had some odd things happen to me, for years even. Oftentimes, I'll hear my name being called out of nowhere, often when I'm alone minding my own business. Occasionally see shadow figures, or at least I think they are, walk out of the corner of my eye in the hallway. That's something that would happen a lot when I was a kid. I think that in my recent years of becoming a born again Christian, I believe that activity has stopped and I've barely had any experiences, which makes me think it was possibly demonic in nature or something. Now, our house might have been built, but that doesn't mean the area surrounding it before the subdivision doesn't have some history to it. My stepmom, now my dad's current wife because of my parents' divorce in 2013, has seen a soldier at the foot of her bed when she's fallen asleep. Well, she's seen a little boy that walks in the hallway. But this was one time. When I was younger, about 14 years old, I sometimes slept on the couch in my living room because I felt like I was being watched in my own bedroom. One time, I heard soft footsteps approach me and I felt a weight on the other side of the couch. I stretched my leg, but the area where the supposed thing was felt really cold. Like it was summer and it was hot outside, but that one area felt like ice. I quickly opened my eyes and saw like an outline of a very tall figure sitting there next to me on the couch. I was curious and terrified at the same time and moved my hand through the same area to check if it was really cold, and it was. It sounded like it tried to comfort me in some weird way because I felt the coldness move from that area towards me and I vaguely heard a whisper that, it's all right, don't be scared. After that, I just kept staring at the figure and then I finally felt the weight lift and I heard it walk to the other side of the living room towards my old piano. I heard some kind of laughing and then my old piano, which was closed at first, the cover was down, started to play a random tune. I was super freaked out and turned the lights on my phone on and watched the piano and I literally saw nothing sitting behind it, but I did see the keys moving. I gathered some courage and moved my hand through the area in front of the piano and it was cold again. Fast forward to one week later, and I was going for a walk at night with my mom, and I was crossing a street. While doing this, I didn't fully watch out for cars and just crossed over. Keep in mind that my mom was waiting for me on the other side of the road. I didn't see the car that was approaching me in time, and I thought I was going to get hit. But then something or someone pulled me back, and I fell back down on the pavement. It was still summer, but that one area I landed in was ice cold again. Ever since those encounters, I sometimes still sense it following me around, but for some reason, I became very comfortable with feeling the cold and sometimes seeing the tall figure or hearing vague whispers. Can anyone maybe help me figure out what this may be?
Our ghost, who we have named Mr. Rydell, is a tall man who wears a trench coat and top hat. I'm also the only person who's ever seen his actual silhouette. I'm also the only person's name he's spoken. One time, I was doing dishes in our back room, and the only other person there was our assistant's manager. But he was in the front of the building doing paperwork. In my ear, I could hear a whisper of my name, and of course, I was freaked out. So I went down to ask my manager what he needed. Upon telling me he never called my name, I realized in that moment that ghosts truly were real. He's also known for opening and shutting our back door, our walk-in freezer, and our guest bathroom. Every Sunday morning, I come in and tell him good morning, and without about five minutes, he's either opened a door and I can hear him walking. It's just our routine. Another occurrence that happens is when you're at the oven, it's a pizza place, out of the corner of your eye, you're able to see his figure cross from our back room to our office. Except, the few times I've seen him, he's stood at the top of our three steps and just stared at me. He's never harmed any of us, so I'm just curious of why he's taken an interest in me. So my mom died in 2019, within the span of a month from breast cancer that spread to her lymph nodes. She was in remission for about a year and it happened so suddenly. Me and her always kind of had a rocky relationship. She was often in controlling abusive relationships. I ended up in one myself as karma for assuming you, ho you have to be weak-minded to be in one, I swear. But anyways, on her deathbed, she spoke to me about seeing her sister who had died, seeing an all black figure that would come to sit with her and talk for hours, but she never remembered the conversation. She had deep apologetic conversations with me that made me realize she was going to die. She knew I was the only one who would believe her, so she'd tell me about all kinds of weird stuff. My ex had died a few months prior, my only true love and she knew this and she'd tell me and reassure me she would speak to him when she saw him and hug him for me a lot of other weird things but i ended up asking her if she could prove there was another side once she's passed i got my wish when she passed away her husband was too distraught to sit with the body so i did and waited for the team from the funeral home to come also I forgot to mention I asked the woman working in the hospice facility, jokingly, if they'd ever seen anything. And both said yes. That they hear footsteps, TVs turn on and open, the window when people pass and let them know it's time to go, or often they will linger. They told me these things with a straight face, as if it's an everyday occurrence. While sitting with my mom, I felt like she was no longer her, even holding her hand. I couldn't feel her energy, if that makes sense. I was crying, and suddenly I heard what sounds like someone slide off the hospital bed, walk with those weird hospital socks to the cabinet, and saw the cabinets open and close about an inch. I said, Mom, it's too early, and ran out the room. A few nights ago, I had a wedding to attend. Whenever I have to dress fancy, I put on this sparkly necklace that my grandma left to me when she passed away. The chain is very, very thin gold, and the pendant is a thick, solid gold R, which is my grandma's and my first initial. The front of the R is covered in diamonds, and it's the kind of necklace pendant that doesn't twist or rotate. It stays facing whichever way you put it on. So naturally, every time I put this necklace on, I always check to make sure I put it on the right way. Shiny side facing out. So before the wedding, I put on the necklace as per usual. Looked in the mirror to make sure it was on the right way, which it was. Then I go to the wedding and take a bun bunch of pictures with friends. All the while, in every single picture, my necklace is faced the right way. 
Then I get home, I'm exhausted, and go lay in bed. I'm too tired to take off my jewelry and makeup, so I leave the necklace on, which I never ever do because the chain is fragile. Right before I went to sleep, my cat jumped into bed with me and was laying across my chest, being adorable. So I took a picture of her laying on my chest. In that picture with my cat, taken moments before I went to sleep, the necklace was on the right way, sparkly diamond side facing out. I had a horrible dream that night where someone was pulling on my necklace and I was yelling at them to stop. But it was too late and the necklace broke off my neck. Instead of the person taking it and stealing, the moment it broke it fell to the floor and the person who broke it disappeared or evaporated. I then picked it up off the ground and was examining it close to my face and realized that the clasp was broken and I was all upset about it. The next morning I jolted awake from the dream and went to take a shower. I looked at myself in the mirror and saw something that made my stomach drop to the floor. My necklace was on backwards. The diamond side was facing inwards, which was impossible, unless it was taken off me and turned completely around and put back on. I definitely didn't take it off myself in my sleep, because I have arthritis in my hands, so it's really hard for me to unclasp it even when I'm awake, because it's so small. I asked my husband if he had taken it off me in my sleep, and he said no, and that he was working on his computer the entire time I was asleep, and didn't even come into the room once. I have zero explanation for how this could have possibly happened. I've racked my brain for literally any reasonable answer, and I can't think of any. It gives me shivers to even think about it, to be honest. In 2017, my grandpa died. My family and I knew he wasn't doing so good, so we went to the hospital to basically say our goodbyes, and he ended up passing away that night after dinner. That night, I had an awful dream that I'll never be able to forget. And before anyone asks, no, I didn't eat anything before I went to bed, or watch anything scary or weird before bed either. So I want to start off by saying that in my dream, it felt very real. I could feel and smell everything. I didn't realize it was a dream until I had actually woken up. Anyways, I dreamt that I got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I could feel the carpet on my feet as I walked out of my room, and I could actually feel myself, you know, peeing. Once I'm finished, I go to exit the bathroom I'm standing in the doorway of the bathroom, which gave me perfect view down my stairs. A bit of the main entrance of my house, along with a bit of the dining room. All of a sudden, I hear knuckles cracking, and notice that there's feet dangling from the doorway of my dining room downstairs. Like as if someone was hanging from the ceiling. I call out for my mom multiple times and there's no answer. The feet then stretch out and a woman jumps down. She looks like a zombie. She's in a weird old dress with tattered hair. She kind of looked like Regan from The Exorcist. I call for my mom again and there's no answer. This woman then smiles at me and yells in an awful raspy voice, get out. I then goes to go into my room, which is right beside the bathroom. As I move slightly, she starts rapidly running up the stairs. I get to my room just in time and immediately lay back in my bed and pull the covers up over my head. Everything goes black. Some time has passed, not sure how long, but I wake up again, feeling so real again. I go to sit up, but I can't. I can only open my eyes. I'm having sleep paralysis, something I have never experienced before. Someone is in the corner of my room. I hear, get out in that same awful raspy voice. I can't do anything. She says it again and starts to get closer. I then wake up for real this time. It's 3 a.m. when I wake up. A few days later, my dog woke up my dad and I in the middle of the night. 
she just wouldn't stop barking. I get up to go check it out, but I heard my dad coming down the hall doing the same thing. So I get back into bed. My dog parking in the night isn't abnormal. She barks at anyone she sees or hears walk by. The next morning, I asked my dad what she was barking at. He told me and my stomach dropped. He said that when he came downstairs, she was barking at the top of the door frame where I saw the woman's feet hanging from the beginning of my dream. He said he even stood in front of her and she moved her head to continue to stare at the top of that door frame. She did eventually stop after 10 minutes. Nothing has happened to me ever since, so I'm not really thinking I brought something home with me from the hospital anymore. But at first I really thought I had. I still think about that dream often and wonder why the woman wanted me to leave and why she was freaking my dog out a few nights later. So me and my mom had the same dream last night. It was about my grandmother who passed away almost a year ago. I always had a very deep bond with my grandmother. I always considered her as my mother and would always visit her during the week when I could. I remember telling her to send me signs, talk to me when she'd pass away. I remember that to that, she only replied that she'd watch over me. Anyway, when she passed away last year because of COVID, I was devastated. I expected her to send me a sign, to feel her presence, but nothing. Unlike my grandfather, whom I could feel his presence with us when he passed away a few years ago. So when I went to sleep last night, I wasn't thinking about anything in particular. Then in my dream, I saw her. I was so happy that I remember screaming, Grandma. I don't remember being in a special place, like a house or outside. It was just the two of us. I don't remember anything I asked her, but I do remember asking her a lot of questions. I asked if my grandpa was fine and she replied yes. And that when she was still alive, she couldn't feel his presence. But that when she passed away, he was waiting for her. When I woke up, I sent a message to my mom because we don't live together anymore. And I said that I had a strange dream last night. She replied, me too, about grandma. I hadn't told her before that it was about my grandma. She told me that in the dream, she asked her if she could see us from above. And to that she replied, yes. I told my mom that I felt so happy in the dream. But she told me that her, on the other hand, was feeling oppressed. So what do you guys think? I don't think it's just a coincidence. So the first time I experienced this, I would say I was about eight or nine. My brother and I were looking through boxes of stuff in the garage. We could hear the occasional car drive by or child in the distance but no sounds extremely close by. All of a sudden, a voice that sounded like it was inside the garage giggled, guys. It began loud and then faded away. Both of my brother and I immediately stopped looking through the boxes and looked at each other. Scared, we ran out, leaving everything as it was. The scarier thing about this experience was that it sounded exactly like our younger cousin who at the time was out of the state. This other story happened this year, around three months ago. On this particular evening, I was extremely tired and decided to head to bed quite early. I was exhausted, so it didn't take much for me to fall asleep straight away. I remember setting my phone down at three minutes past 10. All of a sudden, I was jolted awake by the feeling that someone was right next to my face. And that's when I opened my eyes and heard a raspy low scream that started loud and faded away. I was confused when I first heard it, thinking it was my brother joking around because it sounded exactly like him. So I lifted my head and looked around. 
I tapped my phone to see the time and it was 10.27. No one was there. I closed my eyes and tried to rationalize what had just happened. But all I could think is that it was definitely paranormal. I began to sweat and my heart was racing. I couldn't fall asleep for hours. I don't know what to think, but it's scary because each time it sounded like someone I know. Near Stevens Pass, Washington, there's a two and a half mile long abandoned train tunnel, rumored to be haunted by victims of a deadly avalanche in 1910. About a hundred people perished. Around 15 years ago, our circle of friends had a renegade dance party in the tunnel, which we did about once a year for several years. The tunnel was part of a trail system, but after a partial collapse, the entrance is now blocked off. At some point, we'd always venture away from the party and walk into the pitch black tunnel a mile or more before heading back. On this night, several of us walked deep into the tunnel, which runs under a mountain. We walked in almost complete darkness, using a dim red flashlight to let our eyes fully dilate. Randomly and suddenly, a small flicker of soft white light, about the size of a teardrop, sparkled and shimmered gently while calmly floating in the space just a few feet in front of and above us. The conversations abruptly stopped. After a beat, someone said, what's that? And a couple what the fucks were said. Two or three times it disappeared for a second, then reappeared a few feet over. We were all just flabbergasted, staring at the floating speck of brilliance. Someone started to panic and wanted to skedaddle back the way we came. I said, what are you, to the sparkle, but received no reply. After the brief moment passed, the sparkle was gone, and that was that. Our small group of friends contained all the types. A couple woo types, a few skeptical types, and a few moderates like myself. Some totally sober, some high, some stoned, but nobody was fucked up. We all agreed we saw something roughly matching my recollection and that we didn't know what in the ever living fuck that was. A couple years ago, me and my mother were driving back home on a late Sunday afternoon. We turned down our road, dirt and pretty long and narrow when suddenly something flew directly in front of the car, from the right, and disappeared into the forest, to the left. We both audibly said, what was that, at the same time? Below is the description of the creature. It was slightly larger than our car, which was an old red Kia. It had large, wide wings, and was completely covered in fur or feathers but more closely resembled fur. It had four legs separate from the wings, the two front ones as eagle talons and the back ones resembled crocodile legs if they were furry and not scaly. It had a very long thin tail that tapered into a spade or arrow-like projection on the end. The tail wasn't furred. Its head resembled that of a lion with no mane, but had features as if you'd mixed a lion's head with that of a Chinese dragon-esque head. The fur was light brown on the bottom and a darker brown on the top. After witnessing this thing flying across our road directly in front of us, we sat in shock for a while before slowly driving all the way home. If anyone has any form of answer for what this was, I'd love to hear it, because as a wildlife biologist in training, it's really been bugging me for years. So this occurred when I was around one or two years old. My parents noticed how nearly every week, at different times and locations throughout the house, I would lift my arms up and giggle, acting like I wanted to be picked up. Strange, but I was a kid, so they didn't really pay it much mind. 
Fast forward a couple months, and for a few hours at a time, for a couple months, I would talk to someone in my closet and have the best time with them. He was middle-aged, with dark brown hair, plaid button-up shirt, and old leather shoes. His socks were also plaid. He wore old khakis. I do not remember if he wore glasses or not. Anyways, nearly every week I would talk to him though. I hardly remember what we talked about. I was too after all. Well, soon things changed and bruises started appearing on both of my parents' backs, as well as random cups being broken. This kept going on for a while until a few weeks before we moved when my mom found scissors with blood on them in the bathtub. Not our scissors, and no one was injured badly enough for there to be that amount of blood. So we ended up leaving after that. But I still think the guy was a nice person. Maybe he wasn't the one doing the bad things. Fast forward to hunkering down during Hurricane Katrina 2005. We can't really do much, so we decide to randomly research the history of the house we used to live in. And it turns out that a middle-aged guy who owned the house way before us his own vehicle reversed while he was working on it and killed him. Personally, I believe this is the same person I saw. So in January of 2019, I was sitting next to my best friend on a bus in Sri Lanka. We were sharing a set of earbuds and playing our favorite songs for each other. We were 19 and 20 and falling in love. He finally played his favorite song of all time, the killer's version of Romeo and Juliet. He told me it was the song he always went back to. He told me how listening to it reminded him of so many moments in his life, good and bad. I thought he used it to mark moments like this one, to always be associating it with some feeling he didn't want to lose. I wrote the name of the song down, and the next time I had Wi-Fi access, I downloaded it on Spotify. I had no data, since we were only traveling. That night, when I went to bed, I put my earphones in and put the song on repeat. It typically takes me a long time to fall asleep, so I probably listened to it over a dozen times before I finally dozed off. But it didn't feel like it, because every time it would start over, it sounded like a different song that I had never heard before. I kept checking my phone to see if I'd accidentally played something else. It didn't sound like the same song from the bus either. I tried to pin the melody and couldn't. The next day I told him, that song is amazing. I understand why you love it so much now. It sounds like a different song every time you listen. It's trippy. It just, he just stared at me with the most confused look on his face. It doesn't sound that way to you? I asked. He assured me he didn't know what I was talking about. So that night, I listened to it again on repeat, and the same thing happened, as well as every night after that for the rest of our time in Sri Lanka. After our trip, it sounded normal to me. I've listened to it hundreds of times since then, and it's always sounded the same. It happened with another song, just a few months after I got home. It was the night before my grandmother's funeral. I listened to Rush of Blood to the Head by Coldplay all night, but I didn't know what I was hearing. It sounded different every time, with an indistinguishable melody. To give a little backstory, my husband, children, and I moved into our new home about two years ago. We were informed by our neighbors, who have lived across the streets for as long as I have been alive, that the previous owners died in our new little family home. We finally got settled in a few weeks later. After the children were off to bed, my husband and I were watching a movie in the living room when we both witnessed a white figure pass by our window at a decent speed. We were kind of suspicious, but wrote it off as nothing. Every night for the first year, it happened repeatedly. We weren't afraid. In fact, 
It was a conversation starter when we would have our frequent get-togethers in our home. We realized a couple of days had passed and we hadn't seen the figure. We had a get-together the following weekend and were outside having a small bonfire in our backyard since the winter weather had kept us inside for weeks. We saw a strange shadow across the street, illuminated by the street lamp. My friend B and I went to the fence line to investigate. We witnessed a lady facing us, hunched over with long black hair and a tattered stained white nighty. We were quite frightened, so we calmly gathered the rest of the group to come to witness what we had seen. As we're all standing at the fence line discussing what we are seeing, she rapidly looked at us and we froze. Then she quickly disappeared. In a panic, we all loaded up and went back inside the house. As time passes, we forget all about what we witnessed that night until a few weeks later when we had another get together and seen her again. This time she was closer, standing between the curb and the street. Fortunately, she did not look at us this time. Startled, we all decided to go back inside the house and call it a night. We had a few more get togethers after this and thankfully she was nowhere to be found until one night. The difference between the past encounters and now is that no one was here this time. We had experienced some weird weather for it almost being summer. It was pretty cold out with lots of hailstorms accompanied by extreme thunderstorms. We were sitting inside playing a video game when the power went out. My husband went to the bay window to see if the neighbors across the street's power were also out, and it was. But in a very calm but shaky voice he explained, babe, she's back. I jokingly said, of course she is, as I went to look for myself. There she was, standing at the end of our driveway. As she looked at us, she had no face. I'm really scared to know what will happen once she reaches us.